I've personally been on a learning journey from not manufacturing to now manufacturing. The techniques involved, the understanding of why you would do something or not do something, the right machine tools and the raw material. A combination of those things delivers a very, very high quality product. Hello and welcome to the MTD CNC podcast. I'm your host, Joe Reynolds, and joining me today is Anthony Gray of Renovo and David Wilshire of ZCC Cutting Tools. Gentlemen, welcome. Hello. Hey, Joe. Well, to start off, you know, uh, we're talking about cutting tools, but I want to learn about your two companies. So, Anthony, Renovo, for the people that don't know, what do you do here? So Renovo Solutions is the only cutting tool manufacturer in the northeast of England. Um, we specialize in bespoke manufactured products and manufacturing standard products and modifying standard tools. Uh, what's that look like? Uh, we're talking solid chunk. Yeah, round chunk manufacturing tool linear. So drills, end mills? Drills, end mills, um, anything rotary, um, but specifically designing um, and manufacturing special tooling as well. Do you have any USBs? What makes you different to the other people? Because obviously they can go out of the area to have products manufactured or re grind can't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, from the outset, we've um, adopted uh, an OEM mindset, like an OEM uh, methodology throughout the full process. Uh, we've invested in Industry 4 technology. Um, and probably our main USP is our um, mission statement, which is increase your bottom line. Everything we do is focused at increasing the profitability of either an end user, um, i.e. part manufacturer, or a distribution company selling to the part manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And David, ZCC Cutting Tools, I'm seeing a lot more of your product out there now. Your footprint is growing by the day almost, but again, for the people that don't know you, what do you do? Yeah, so ZCC Cutting Tools, uh, European, Europe, GMBH, we're the European operation of ZCC Cutting Tools. We're the, one of the largest cutting tool companies in the world, um, manufacturing uh, mainly uh, indexable product and round chunk, uh, end mills and drills uh, in, the, in the UK market since 2011. But in the past five years, our business has grown over 450%. So again, same question to you. There's lots of manufacturers out there or distributors of products. What makes you different, if anything? Yeah. So um, very much like uh, Renovo, uh, you know, our sort of mindset is to to assist uh, our customers in reducing their costs. So we bring into market a, a very high quality product at a, a cost a cost effective price, and we can achieve that by basically having control of, of all elements of our manufacturing in, 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 as it, all in our hands, as we say. Mm -hmm. So from raw materials through the sharp end. Yeah, so, and it's no coincidence the three of us sat around this table today in the northeast of England. Uh, David, can you tell us why we're here on those an, an announcement? Yeah, so there's, there's an imminent announcement uh, of a, a part, new partnership, business partnership between ZCC Cutting Tools Europe, GmbH, UK division, and Renovo Solutions. Um, very excited about this new partnership, and it's going to align two very um, forward thinking businesses. Yeah, well, what's it mean? You know, this, this gives the highlights, I guess. Yeah, so so basically the partnership with, um, is covering two, two main elements to begin with, really. So renewing of existing products or commonly known in the market as regrind. Uh, but we, as, as Anthony mentioned, uh, Renovo set up like a, with the OEM mindset. So we're going to bring manufacture, uh, manufacture, manufacture specification renews to the market, not regrinds. Um, so that's that's one part of the the business model. The other model then would be to manufacture semi-standard products from our existing portfolio, so expanding on maybe odd sizes or or unique dimensions, but also out and out special manufacture as well. And Anthony, from a Renovo perspective, what does this mean for the business? It's obviously a massive opportunity. That's not every day that um, a. a a relatively new company to market um, has the opportunity to partner with um, the world's biggest um, cutting tool manufacturer. Um, it's a huge, um, huge potential for our future, future um, in the marketplace and continued investment in employment and machinery. And before we ask David, why do you think you were selected? I, th I think the two companies um, started the UK operations at very similar times, um, but the business models align very, very well. We're both very focused on quality, um, delivering the best service to industry, increasing profitability or reducing costs. So I think the synergy between the two businesses aligned very, very well. And from the initial discussions with Dave, um, I could tell that both companies were looking for a very similar thing. Mm -hmm. And David, from your perspective? 
yeah, um, just to sort of reiterate what Anthony is saying, um, we wanted to, our, our businesses align from a strategy point of view and a, and a synergy be, uh, between us of what, of what we want for, for our um, forward journey. But also, also quality was very important to ZTC Cutting Tools. We've worked tirelessly in the marketplace to to emphasise the, the the very high quality of this product and um, seeing the quality that Anthony and his team are, uh, um, are outputting through the business on a daily basis. Uh, Anthony has full access to to our you know, our raw materials right through to our <laughs> techniques and coating. Uh, uh, methodology um, and it's, it's just a fantastic product and it's worth noting that you know brexit or no brexit getting product you know from one country to another it, it, it's time consuming regardless of any current issues um, to essentially have a manufacturing site here in the uk that must be massive for you guys yeah so um I started, me and Anthony started speaking uh, in 2020 um brexit was imminent at the time um, we were quite confident that um, our procedures for, for continuing shipment into the UK were in place and we've maintained in excess of 97% success rate for next day delivery since January and we've been widely recognised from our distribution partners in the UK for for being one of the, the, the best sort of solutions post-Brexit for, for that continuation of our service. But prior to um, January the 1st, any manufacturer specification regrinds needed to be shipped back out to the continent, which was going to be become very difficult um, post, post-Brexit. post So having a UK manufacturing facility and a partner in the UK to to not just continue what we was offering previously, but to better that service. Um, and, and what we've seen in the pilot scheme that we've been running sort of um, quietly for the past six months is the turnaround with Renovo for not just for re- uh, renews but for special manufactured product is two weeks and that's unheard of in the industry especially in Brexit at the moment. Yeah I think that's the big one yeah new product 90 odd percent success next yeah. day delivery that's great um, but a regrind you've got to package them correctly you've got to get them a new PS or whatever your chosen distribution method is you're probably losing up to a week in transport then more and more people looking at carbon their carbon footprint getting things on aeroplanes just to be reground something that can be done possibly 10 mile away so to me it's, no, it's a no-brainer is that what you're seeing here as well Anthony yeah absolutely I mean for a for a company for a Renovo our USP has always been locality um, but what we've done is brought a local business offering to ZCC and the team and spread it to their distribution network in the UK yeah, no, exciting times. And the second part of the podcast, uh, I want to talk about today, you know, we're at Renovo, solid shank manufacturer, regrinder. I want to talk what makes a good end mill or what makes a good solid shank tool. And that, if I come to you first, Anthony, you know, there's, there's good product, there's not so good product out there. Um, you know, what makes a good one from a bad one, I guess, or not so good one, should I say? I think um, because I've personally been on a learning journey from not manufacturing to now manufacturing some of the most complicated things in industry, there's a few things that come to mind um, straight away, which is obviously the techniques involved, um, the understanding of why you would do something or not do something, fundamentally having the right infrastructure, so i.e. the design software and the right machine tools, and the raw material, which obviously, you know, with the partnership with ZCC, the raw material is absolutely fantastic. Um, that, I would say, though, a combination of those things um, delivers a very, very high quality product. David? Yeah, so, uh, you know, there's, there's loads of competition in this area. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of end mills out there and, and drills for, you know, round track tooling in general. Um, so for us, um, and, and I think Andy will appreciate this from what he's seen so far of our product. Some of the grinding techniques that ZCCC cutting tools are implementing are quite unique for the market, and uh, you know, that's something Anthony has recognised since working with us. So, t- obviously, from a te- from a from a design aspect, um, for me, a good base quality product, um, a strong core product with the latest and greatest coatings in the market and um, what our tooling is um, you know when we when it is applied correctly we've seen some substantial tool life benefits from from having all those all those elements put together 
Yeah, so if you go back, it seems a million years ago, 1996 to early 2000s, I used to design and manufacture solid shank tools. And not a lot's changed. Technology's changed, but it's the same for me. It's three things. It's the core material, the base material. Today, we predominantly talk about carbide, but HSE, powder mats, and things like that as well would fall under the same bracket. Um, the technology, here you operate, is it exclusively linear, I think, yeah, here? Absolutely. So there's a whole host of benefits of linear technology we can get into. But probably the most important thing, as ever, is the is, is the guy or lady programming these mm -hmm. machines. And here at Renovo, you, you, you cover all those bases, Anthony. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of our key um, things when we started the company was employment and employing and bringing back a trade to the northeast, which either was a dying or dead trade for a, you know the last forty years, sort of thing. Tool making was quite big in the northeast, um, and then you know it went to nothing, and we've brought it back now, um, and we've now got five apprentices, and we're lucky enough to have the only female. Um, tool and cutter grinder in all of the UK, which I think is a massive statement. And we'll continue to invest in training, employment, um, apprentices to make sure that we're upskilling. And then what's quite nice is everyone's learning at the same level. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And just a final point I want to touch on, and Anthony, you're probably best to answer this. You know, it used to be we went from four flute traditional end mills, not variable helix, maybe radius, maybe not. Um, and then you add ball noses. Now we've got conical end mills, things like that. What's next? What are you seeing a lot of? Well, I guess to start with, what's the most popular end mill that comes through here? I don't mean brand, but I mean generically. Would it be like a four flute vary yeah, mill? A 16 mil, four flute, variable helix, differential pitch. All day, every day. You know, 92 overall, 32 of flute length. It's everybody in the world is selling that tool. And ultimately, everyone that's regrinding or like us, renewing tooling is doing that on our machines. Um, to answer your first question, I think one-hit tooling is becoming massive now, um, taking out several tools or operations because of limitations in tool stations. Um, you know, specifically, I'm talking about round shank tooling. There are other things in industry, but um, we're seeing a big demand for, say, one tool doing five operations. And customers don't mind paying for that as well because, you know, you think of the setup time on the machines at the front end of clocking a note or five tools, making sure everything's at the right position, making sure it's all cutting the right depth and that sort of thing. One tool goes in and takes all them tools out. We're seeing a big demand for that. And David? Yeah, first of all, the the you know, the, the four flute variable pitch uh, end mill, the, the reason why that's so popular is centre cutting. And you can ramp, you can, you know, you could take a, a, a quite FT full slot cut with it, and then you've got your three D milling as well. So, the, the you know, the, even though companies are, like ourselves, we are going multiple flute, mul no, multiple sort of helix and, and and things like that. The, the most popular is is still the four flute for, for versatility, basically. But but again, um, you know, we it's education as well. Um, You've got companies that would use a long series end mill and they would use it for one particular job. But by giving a bit more edu education, you can use different sections of that flute length to do multiple operations, just things simple like that. And mm -hmm. It's just re-educating. And, and I think um, there was a little bit of stigma with, with solid carbide round shank tooling when it first came in. People were scared of it because of the cost. As the costs reduce and people are, trying, are willing to adapt new techniques and processes, um, the, 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 the sort of skill sets of, of, of the machinists is increasing as well. Benefit to regrinds, of course. Mm -hmm. Benefits to regrinds, yeah. Yeah, and how about, well, I'm seeing more of these modular tools now, whereas, you know, obviously carbide is expensive. Presumably it's, con it's a commodity. It's going to com continue to increase in price. How yeah. about these screw-on modular systems? Yeah, so we have our uh, QCH system, um, which um, for our sort of uh, uh, standard range, is there in two two flute and four flute standard product with it, with indexable heads to go on there as well. But um, with Renovo, we've uh, we've uh, sort of provided Anthony with the blanks so he can take take advantage of that situation as well. So we can make the you no know, special product, special manufacturing uh, screw on indexable, which is captive to us. So. I, I believe up to three times diameter now mm. in length. So it's quite a versatile solution. Mm. And that, from your perspective, um, when would you use that? Is it you get an, let's say you're given an engineering drawing rather than an, a cutting tool drawing. If you looked at that, when would you think, do you know what, I'm going to go modular or I'm going to go solid? So predominantly we get, um, predominantly we get 
engineering drones. We very, very rarely get a tool drone. It's just something, I think, possibly in the northeast, um, because there's not been a tool grinder facility to design tools, create tool uh, drones, and then, you know, potentially they get recycled through other channels and stuff like that. But w as much as possible to answer the question, um, you know, the, the carbide is obviously a cost of the um, product, albeit not the main part of the cost of the product. You know, there's a lot of design time and grinding time and that sort of thing. But we're very passionate about um, something I come up with when I started the company was reduce your carbide footprint. And it was very much, <laughs> if we can get away with using something that's a quarter of the length and it'll still do exactly the same as if it was, you know, four times longer, ultimately that's preserving carbide reserves, which are a diminishing, um, like you said, commodity or raw material. And ultimately carbide's bonded with uh, cobalt, which cobalt's getting used a lot more and the price of everything's going up because of battery manufacturing and whatever else. So wherever we can, we will. But ultimately as well, I think it's a fantastic product because of its three co three point contact. Um, and it's equally as strong as being a solid bit of carbide. I think that's the big misconception, isn't it? You know, because there's an extra, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Connection, Connection I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, you, you, I guess you could argue that it's not, it's not as rigid, but, but it is. Mm. Oh, definitely. It is. It's, it's as rigid as a as a, a, a um, as a solid uh, tool, but it's more versatile because if you've got an extended length, you've got you can we, you've got the versatility of a steel shank or a carbide shank. Like, so like Anthony said, if you've got a, a, a standard length and you're using a steel shank, your your costs are minimal, mm. and you're just replacing that uh, s s no smaller bit of carbide on the bottom, the screw on we, attachment. We find as well that um, what really s upsells it to customers is the um, repeatability. So they can put it in a collet choke or a hydraulic choke or a shrink fit or whatever and not have to take the holder out. As long as what we agree at the front end is a total standard process, which it is, it's documented and it's ground to that, the customer can screw off a worn head, send it back for renew, screw on a new one without having to change Z heights or anything. Yeah, no, it's a good one. And just a final one to wrap up the podcast. Um, we've talked about going from non vable helix to a four flute very mill. You get four, five, six, seven. I think I've seen the 12 foot, 12 flute tool is the big, uh, mm. most flutes I've seen. You know, what we're going to see next, obviously, we've seen the emergence of conical barrel tools or circle segment cutters, depending on what you call them. Is that going to get mass adoption in the UK? Um, if so, why? And maybe what's next after that, even? Um, if I come to you first, Anthony. I think. Um I think the cutting tool industry is waiting for something that hasn't been done. That's my personal opinion. And I'm, I think we could... What is it? Quick. Exactly. Well, well, tell yeah. after, tell I'll, I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> but I genuinely think there's something coming that someone needs to think out the box, which will change something. You know, there's been a few things in industry I've seen from an indexable point of view that have, have done that. Um, but I think solid wise, you know, like you say, it's been around since you've been grinding tools, the four flute end mill. And I think something's coming that'll change dramatically. Um, I think with regards to 3D applications or five ac uh, axis applications, like you said about barrel mills and conical cutters and stuff, I think as companies in industry adopt the right technology, I think eventually tool manufacturers will have the volume to need to make the tools more frequently. Um, we've got a couple of very, very good and close um, customers that use um, lollipop cutters from us, conical cutters, lens cutters, you know, all of the the, the, the new to industry sort of things, I still think it's a long way away until everyone's doing it just because the the, tech, the the customer needs to find the work and then they need to buy the technology and the machine tools to be able to utilize the tools to speed up the processes. David, you probably already know, but you can't tell us, I guess. You're, you're probably working on projects <laughs> that we're going to see in three to five years, I guess, are you? Yeah, we have, we have some uh, couple of exciting new um, developments. This, um, I wouldn't say new technology. You know, I've seen it in the past, but I haven't seen it for a long time. And that I, I'm really excited to see where that takes us. It's like a, a step forward from our our new latest TM range that we brought out for feet resistance. But um, it's like Anthony said, it, it's it's like it's always a race with machine tools and cutting tools. Um, if the if the technology is it, the machine, you you can you can manufacture any any tool. And I think it's companies like Anthony and and their expertise and their their vision that will create the tools for the future. And I'm very excited to see where this where this goes. There we are, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on today's MTD CNC podcast. Great to catch up, and we'll see you again soon for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review.
Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.